Well, hey, Christ Covenant, I want to let you know where we're headed as far as sermon this Sunday as we finish up our study of the book of Jonah. We've been following this, this theme of great. In chapter one, we saw a great storm. In chapter two, a great fish. In chapter three, a great city. And now in chapter four, I'm going to entitle the sermon, A Great Grace. What we're going to see is this continuing theme of of God's great grace and love that he shows to sinners. And we're going to continue to see God's heart for the nations. We're going to see his heart for the nations through a rebuke of Jonah, Jonah who has not had the same heart for the nations, who has not loved those that are not Israel, that are not those who have received the blessings of God in the initial covenant with Abraham. And I think this is going to raise for us some serious questions that we'll need to wrestle with as we work our way through the text, all of us. We'll need to wrestle with questions like, do we really understand grace? Do we understand that we have been uh, shown the grace of God through nothing that we deserve, uh, that we have been shown this grace in a, in a way that is undeserving? Another question we need to wrestle with is, do we resent God's grace when it is shown to those who are not like us? Is there any sense of ethnocentrism in us that we struggle with? This, this idea that we that we're somehow, our culture is somehow superior. Our nation is somehow superior. Our, our you know, uh, who we are is somehow superior to others. I think that'll lead to questions like this. Do we uh, really see that in order to be a means of God's grace for the nations, in order for us to be those who are used uh, in order uh, for God's heart for the nations to be shown, particularly in, in coming to share the gospel, do we value our own uh, material blessing over uh, being a means of grace to others? Do we value our own uh, comfort over being used as a means of grace uh, for others. Now, it's a very interesting text, and there's a lot that is said here, and it's very similar to a story we will see uh, in the New Testament, a story called uh, the prodigal son. And we've been hitting themes and traces of this throughout, but what's interesting is the, the story of the prodigal son has two sons. It has the younger son, the prodigal who goes off into wild living, and it has the older brother who stays with the father. And yet at the end of the story of the prodigal son, the older brother is in some ways rebuked uh, by his father, and the story is left hanging. The, the question hangs out there. We don't know the resolution to the story. We don't know if the older son comes in to enjoy the banquet that is being thrown for the prodigal who has returned. And there is there's much by way of of uh, comparison with the story of Jonah. We know there's really two ways that somebody can rebel against God, that they can sin. We call this sometimes licentious living and legalistic living. But licentious is the, the younger son, the prodigal who goes off and squanders his father's fortune uh, through wild living. And then the legalistic one is going to be the, the older brother, the one who thinks that he deserves the blessings of God. Again, blessings that he has not worked hard to create for himself, but that he deserves the blessings of the Father uh, because of how good he is, or because he is of the right stock, you might say. And that's what we're going to see play out in the in the life of Jonah. He thinks he is one who is a worthy recipient of the blessings of God, but he doesn't think Nineveh is. And the story ends in a, in a, a very interesting way. He, God kind of rebukes him, saying, do you do well to be angry for the death of the plant? He says, yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord says this, and it's very interesting. You pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in the night, perish in the night. Should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also much cattle? The story remains hanging. We do not know how Jonah responds to the grace of God, the fact that he is welcomed back in, as you were, Ninevites, rebellious, wayward prodigals who have lived in a licentious way. And so the story is left hanging. Will Jonah understand the grace of God, and will he then live accordingly, just like it is with the older brother in the story of the prodigal? So we're going to work our way through that on Sunday. Read the text. Read chapter 4. Ask, what is God trying to teach Jonah? What is God trying to teach Israel? What is God trying to teach us, and then let's come together and study that text on Sunday. I look forward to seeing you then.